Hello, True Crime Stories family. Welcome back. I appreciate everyone that has been giving me words of motivation and encouragement, and even correcting me. Amy commented, loving these videos you are releasing. I love the pictures and information that aren't easily available. Please keep diving into this family. I'm happy that you enjoy my videos. This is a sad situation, but it's also fascinating at the same time. The rabbit hole goes so deep with this family that we learn something new every day. Carol D. commented, I had a feeling that Maggie and Paul were a handful for Alex. I think he wanted so badly to please them that he began stealing. He also knew that by the time all his wrongdoings began surfacing, Maggie would have left him any ways as he would become shit in her eyes, so he got rid of both of them before they got rid of him. I agree, and I think he started stealing to finance his family's luxurious lifestyle to keep them happy and to pay for his expensive pill habit. He lived way above his means. In my other video, I talked about Alex trying to buy Paul's love because he couldn't bond with him. Maggie knew that Alex wasn't telling her everything about his pill habit, the boat crash lawsuit, his finances, or all the extra stolen money he had. He planned to eliminate them. Alex saw that Maggie had already begun to separate herself from him. She started to see Alex for the monster he was. Maggie moved out and was probably going to divorce him and take him for what he had left, so he figured if he eliminate Maggie and Paul, then he could possibly keep some of the money and assets he had and wouldn't lose everything. Alex did go out his way to please his family, to the point where he became inconsiderate with other people's time. If Maggie, Paul, or Buster was calling Alex's cell phone, he would pick up, even if he was in a meeting or busy at a deposition. He would stop the meeting to answer his cell phone for them. It didn't matter if it was for a gallon of milk or a true emergency. He would aggravate the hell out of me when you'd be in a deposition and they would call and he'd answer it and, you know, you'd be in a meeting or whatever. And he always took their calls, whereas my wife and my children never called me unless it was a true emergency. And Alec took their calls, whether it was a, they needed, you know, a gallon of milk or, you know, they had something important to tell him. I mean, he always took their calls. Norris Morrison commented, I'm so sorry what happened to Maggie and Paul, but they were nasty people. Also, she hid what her husband and kids did. His girlfriend said how upset she got with him the night Paul ran his car in the ditch. When Mallory was, not one time did Maggie go to or call that family to say how sorry she was that her child has caused the death of their child. But karma was way overdue for this family, and now it has caught up with them. There will be more. Jane Kingsmill commented, OMG, Maggie was not a nice person. I guess she could have, her housekeeper, but I don't think so. It just hurt me to think about those families that got stolen from, and she looked down on them. Wow. Jane Kingsmill also commented, Wow, I don't like speaking ill of the dead, but it doesn't sound like Maggie was a very nice person. I agree. It's such a tragic situation, and it seems like they weren't very nice people. What Paul was doing was very dangerous, and I'm happy no one got hurt. You can't just go around crashing your car into ditches because you're drunk or angry. Paul's girlfriend could have gotten seriously injured, and that would have been another lawsuit for them. Paul had a temper, and he was like his mom in a sense that he looked down on the poor people in the community too. Do you guys remember when Paul's girlfriend said one time while he was drunk, he got mad at her and told her that's why your dad don't make enough money to take care of your family? That's why y'all poor. I believe Mallory Beach's family deserved an apology from Paul and his family, and still deserve an apology from Alex. It's never too late, however, that will never happen, because Alex would have to admit that Paul was responsible. But he would never do that because that would throw off his lie about Paul not driving the boat at the time of the crash. Maggie did hide a lot of stuff. She knew Alex was getting high and taking pills because he was doing it for 20 years. There's no way she didn't know he was getting high. I'm sure Alex's behavior changed, and he had mood swings especially when he went through withdrawal. I can imagine that Alex was a completely different person than who he was when they first met in college. Alex would jerk in his sleep and his bowels were uncontrollable before he went to rehab. The day after Alex got fired from his law firm, the incident with Cousin Eddie happened, and Alex's brothers picked him up from the hospital and took him straight to a rehab in Georgia. When they drove him to rehab, he had diarrhea and went to the bathroom on himself in the car. 
I'm sure that was an unbearable ride from South Carolina to Georgia. His brothers really loved him and cared about him, but Alex didn't have the capacity to love anyone back. Maggie looked the other way until she had to approach his drug situation, because it was in her face when Paul found Alex's pill stash. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In a court deposition from the boat crash, there were rumors that Paul got drunk and wrecked his truck a lot of times, and that makes me wonder how many fraudulent automobile insurance claims Alex could have made. Things that make you go, hmm. Alex probably told the insurance company a bogus story about Paul's truck wrecks and looked at his truck wrecks as a money grab. Most parents discipline their kids and take their car keys until they learn their lesson and stop being reckless. But not Alex. He is notorious for stealing other people's insurance money, so I know he just couldn't help himself. As parents, Alex and Maggie could have met with Mallory's parents and showed them some kind of compassion and empathy. They are grieving parents who lost their child. They took no accountability and was only focused on clearing Paul's name instead of making him apologize. Mallory's family was heartbroken, and they were not playing with Alex after the boat crash. The whole family was unapologetic acting like they didn't care, and they showed absolutely no remorse. Did you know that Alex was so corrupt that after Mallory's family came after him for their money, he tried to get the people in his law office to put his money in the law office account, and they told him no, they weren't getting involved in hiding his money. Alex was very cunning. His friends and family had no clue that they were sending sympathy cards saying sorry for your loss to the same monster who was responsible for causing his own family's deaths. After Paul and Maggie's death, Alex went back to work, but did not work on any of his cases. He wanted to get sympathy and make people feel bad for him. A regular day at the law firm consisted of Alex going into his office, crying and looking through his sympathy cards. He had a stack of sympathy cards. Meanwhile, there were deadlines and work that needed to be done on his cases. Alex was manipulating the people in his law firm to feel bad for him because he lost his family, so they wouldn't think that he was the monster who did it. You won't believe that Alex stole the same money from his law office twice. Now Alex is a different type of thief. He is a real greedy thief with no limits or boundaries for anyone. Where Alec was paid, he didn't put the money in, but the check was written to him by mistake. Mm -hmm. And it was, I've gone back and looked at it and made sure his name and Randy's name appeared at one over the other, and it was just a fat finger or just a, a missed thing with the mouse. And the check was generated to Alec. And then there was a second check generated, one in March, one in April. The one check was negotiated in May, I think. The other check stayed on his desk and was negotiated the next October. Well, what that did was that threw out our, and this is in our operating account, it's not, it wasn't client money. So it, it threw our operating account out of balance. And when we started looking at it, then we realized that he wasn't the one that was supposed to have gotten paid. We had a, basically a powwow. Our president, Danny Henderson, went to him, talked to him about it, and Alec swore that it was just a mistake, and he paid back the money with interest because Randy had been out of his money. He was paid actually, it back with stolen money, correct? Well, I don't. I didn't know that, but I mean, he paid it back, and I think there had been testimony that somehow that got swept under the rug. It did not get swept under the rug at all. It it was investigated, but everything seemed to make sense because the check was written to him. He cashed a check that was written to him, and well, I might know whether or not I had an extra 123000 or whatever it was, or twenty one. Um, Alec always seemed just sort of disheveled with his own funds, so it, it made enough sense, and it, it, there wasn't enough there to, to get in a brouhaha and, and, you know, terminate somebody or create more of a fuss than, than it was, but it wasn't swept under the rug. Everything seemed to fall into place at the time. Now, obviously, had we known any of the other stuff at the time that we found out in September, then it would have been a different story. But bottom line is, he got, he got discovered, 
oops, it was a big mistake, he says, he pays it back, and people move on, right? And that was in 2018. That was in 2018. And we're talking about the check written that was supposed to go to his brother that went to him instead. Right. There and he was never one to loan money for those operating expenses generally, is that right? I think he loaned once or twice, but once or not, twice. it wasn't regular. Right, and not around this time period, correct? I, I didn't go back and look at that part of it. So I was one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, roughly something like that. One hundred twenty-one, one hundred twenty-five. All right. I was more concerned about how it happened to begin with. It, Randy's initials are RM, and Alex's initials in our system are RAM. So that was. And what he did was, was he gets that check, and instead of saying this isn't one hundred twenty-some odd thousand dollars for me, he actually goes to staff a couple days later and says, "I lost that check. Cut me another one, right?" Yes, sir. And then he cashes that one, right? He, he eventually cashes. He cashes the, the first second one. one yeah, in he, a pretty short he, order, correct? He, he cashes the the first one in October of the next year. And he then sits on the other one for an extended period of time, and then cashes that one, right? He did. Steals the same money twice. Right? Susie Maroka yes, commented sir. after the Alec went to live with Maggie's parents. They were so good to Alec that they paid for him to join them for a vacation in Florida. Maggie's parents paid for everything. During one of his jailhouse calls, Alec keeps pushing for Buster to contact Maggie's father to ask him for money. I kid you not. It's a shame how Alex played mind games and manipulated everyone around him after Maggie and Paul's death. Maggie's family really loved Alex. They were concerned about Alex's safety. He had his family and friends thinking that the same people responsible for their deaths could still be out there and possibly come after them or Alex. They let Alex stay with them because they were scared for his life and trying to protect the monster. Robin Wolf commented, curious anyone actually verify that grave markers have been ordered, and hoping Maggie's family move her to them. Some people commented saying they hope Maggie's family move them away from the Murdochs to be buried closer to Maggie's family. I hope they do move them and give them proper headstones. According to the New York Post, a cemetery worker told a Post photographer the headstones for Maggie. 52, and Paul, 22 are still delayed but didn't specify what that meant. Thank you for watching.